Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. A shoot will spring up from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Fear is not something that people normally desire to have. Fear is an emotion that we would rather do without. And yet, Proverbs says that the, the, the fear of the Lord is a good thing. And here in Isaiah, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. One of the most vivid examples of the fear of the Lord was at Mount Sinai. It was 50 days after that first Passover and Israel's deliverance from Egypt that they arrived at Mount Sinai. This is one of the reasons that Pentecost is celebrated when it is. Moses is about to ascend the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. And God tells Moses to set three days apart, to make three days holy, and to have them wash their clothes. And do not let anyone go near the mountain or touch it, or else they would be put to death. And on that third day, as Moses ascends the, mountains, ascends the mountain and receives the Ten Commandments, there's thunder and lightning. The mountain is covered with a cloud, and there's a very loud blast of a ram's horn. And all the people in the camp stood far back, and they trembled with fear. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come to test you, so that you may always fear him, so that you do not sin. This fear of the Lord is to step back from sin and to hate evil, to not only know the will of God, but to carry it out. And someone who has this fear is someone who knows how dangerous sin is. And this fear can only be worked through the Holy Spirit because we would not know what sin was apart from the law, the law revealed in God's word. The Holy Spirit works like fire and uses the law of God to terrify our consciences because ultimately we can't step back from sin far enough. We're too close and our sin would condemn us and kill us forever. But the spirit of the fear of the Lord is not just terror, but awe, reverence. Once we believe that we are not able to complete the law as God requires, the Holy Spirit causes us to look to him who is. Jesus is the one who perfectly had the gift of the fear of the Lord. The fullness of the Holy Spirit poured out onto Jesus, led Jesus to willingly submit himself to the will of his Father and to come under the law. Forever you shall and you shall not that we did not do. Jesus did. Jesus perfectly and has exactly done what the Father has asked, even dying on a cross on another mountain, Mount Calvary. And by bringing you the gifts won at this mountain, the Holy Spirit touches you with the means of grace and clothes you with power from on high, the righteousness of Jesus, removing the cloud of God's wrath over you and giving you eternal life. So this gift of the Holy Spirit, of our fear of the Lord, also means something for our fear of the world and of things in the world. We would naturally fear the things of the world. And this fear is extorted by the devil, who is called the ruler of the world. The devil stirs up your fear that you're in darkness, even while you're actually in the light. The devil will make you fear, believing that everything you see around you happening today means that God cannot possibly be in control. Today he'll make you fear someone who is sick or may be sick. He'll make you uh, fearful of good and of doing good. He'll make you run from your neighbor, run from helping your neighbor in his need. He'll even make you deprive your neighbor of what he needs and to look out for no one's interests but your own. He'll make you fearful of people uh, that are not like you, of different skin colors and of different cultures. 
He'll make you deathly afraid, worried and nervous of death. He'll make you think that dying is only horrible and that there's nothing more to be feared than dying by a global virus. But the Holy Spirit reminds us that because of Jesus, all these things that cause us fear have been overcome. And like the devil himself, these things have no power over Jesus. Fear of the world can be detrimental, but the fear of the Lord is always beneficial. Paradoxically, one who fears God does not need to fear anything or anyone else. The Holy Spirit assures you ultimately of hope. He grants you his gifts so that you and I, so that he can build up his church. Not so you can compartmentalize your faith or your gifts apart from the world, but so that you can be in the world without fear, so that you may use your gifts in service to your neighbor, so that his church may be built up, not just the church in one location, but the church uh, of, of all people, of all languages in all the world. And through enlightening you with his gifts, he will sanctify and keep you in the one true faith. Just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. Happy Pentecost. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, forevermore. Amen.